Today on Real Chemistry, we're going to talk about determining the empirical formula of a special type of molecule, a molecule called a hydrocarbon. If you haven't yet watched my other videos on empirical formulas or on using chemical formulas as a conversion factor, you should watch those before continuing. So here our goal is to figure out the empirical formula of a hydrocarbon. And hydrocarbons are just any molecules with carbon and hydrogen. So one example would be methane, which we see down here. And if you combine methane or any other hydrocarbon with oxygen, what you get out is CO2 and water. And it turns out that based on the amount of CO2 or water that comes out, you can figure out what the empirical formula was of the hydrocarbon you put in. So typically, you don't know the formula of the hydrocarbon that you're putting in. So what it actually looks like, instead of having methane drawn out there, you just have some unknown hydrocarbon and you burn it in the presence of oxygen and it spits out CO2 and water. And our goal is to use the amount of CO2 and water produced to figure out the empirical formula of that unknown hydrocarbon. So first I'm gonna show you a slide that will tell you about our strategy for how we're gonna do this, and then we're gonna do a few practice problems. So the main goal here is to figure out that empirical formula, right? And so the very first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna take the mass of carbon dioxide and water that spit out when we burn the hydrocarbon, and we're gonna calculate the moles of carbon dioxide and water. So that's the very first step. And we know that when we combusted our hydrocarbon, that it just contributed carbon and hydrogen. And any oxygen in our CO2 and water came from oxygen that we reacted the hydrocarbon with. So the next step is getting rid of that oxygen. Instead of thinking about the total moles of carbon dioxide and water, we just want to think about the moles of carbon and hydrogen that was spit out. And that's where using chemical formulas as conversion factors is important because we're going to go from the moles of CO2 and water to the moles of just carbon and hydrogen. And that's the next thing we're going to do. Once we have the moles of carbon and hydrogen, then we basically just have the ratio of carbon to hydrogen, which is the empirical formula. So the last thing we're going to do is we're just going to determine that empirical formula from that ratio. So let's go ahead and do an example problem. So here we read that the combustion of a hydrocarbon results in 5.18 grams of carbon dioxide and 2.65 grams of water. And we want to know what is the empirical formula of that hydrocarbon. And so I've broken this process into four steps. Step one says, calculate the moles of CO2 and water. And we do that just by dividing the masses of our CO2 and water by their molar masses, which I've listed down here. And I'm going to divide this screen into our calculations for hydrogen and to our for our calculations for hydrogen. So here's carbon up top, and then I'll put hydrogen down below. So our first step in each of those cases is to calculate the moles of carbon dioxide and the moles of water. So we have 5.18 grams of carbon dioxide, and the way we're going to go from grams to moles is just the molar mass. So I'm going to go ahead and write the conversion factor to do that. And we want moles up top, because that's what we want to get out. And we want the molar mass on the bottom, which for carbon dioxide, like I said, is 44.01. So 44.01 grams in every mole of carbon dioxide. When we divide that, we'll get out the molar mass. Or, I'm sorry, the moles of carbon dioxide. All right, we're going to do that same thing for our water. We start out with 2.65 grams. And we're just going to multiply that by our conversion factor to get that into moles, which is one mole of water for every 18.02 grams. Okay, so that's step one. We've calculated the moles of carbon dioxide and of water. And step two is we're going to go from the moles there of carbon dioxide and water to the moles of carbon and hydrogen. And the way we're going to do that is with our chemical formulas. So for example, for CO2, we want to get to carbon. So I'm just going to write carbon up top. And we want to cancel out CO2. And since CO2 has one carbon for every one carbon dioxide molecule, we just fill that in with a one there and a one there. And when we multiply through by both of those conversion factors, it's going to get us, give us out the moles of carbon. All right, let's set up that same conversion factor for water. So water, the conversion factor looks a little different. We want to go to hydrogen. And we're coming from water molecules. 
And now you'll notice, hey, there's two hydrogens for every one water molecule. So now we fill in a two up here and a one in front of the waters. And when we multiply those conversion factors out, we're gonna get the moles of hydrogen. So let's go ahead and do that math. So when we plug in everything for the top guy, we're gonna get 0 0.1177 moles of carbon. So that's just moles of carbon because we went from mass of carbon dioxide to moles of carbon dioxide. And then that second conversion factor took us to moles of carbon. And when we do the math for our hydrogen, how many moles of hydrogen we have, we get out 0 0.2941. And the units there are moles of hydrogen. All right, so now we're gonna do the same thing that we did when we were determining empirical formulas. We're gonna divide both of those by the smallest number of moles. So if you take a look, you'll notice that we have fewer moles of carbon than we do of hydrogen. So we're gonna divide both of them by 0 0.1177. So I'm gonna erase our units here so I can write in that space, divided by 0 0.1177. All right, when we do that division, up top we're gonna to get one, and that makes sense because we're just dividing the same number by itself. And on the bottom, we're actually gonna get 2.5. So what that's telling us, what we've just figured out already, is that for every one carbon, there's two and a half hydrogen. So we're very close to the empirical formula. The last thing that we need to do is simplify our ratio to whole numbers there. And so if we're very close to a whole numbers, we just round. But here we're at 2.5, that's not very close to a whole number. So instead what we do is we multiply and we just guess what number we need to multiply that by so that we can get a whole number. And if you multiply 2.5 by two, then you're gonna get five or a whole number. So we have to multiply both of those guys by two. So that gives us two for our quantities of carbon and that gives us five for our quantities of hydrogen. And what that's telling us is that we have two carbons for every five hydrogens. And that's our empirical formula for that hydrocarbon. Let's go through one more example so you can get a feel for how to do this on your own. Okay, so this one is the same exact problem. The only thing that's changed is the amount of carbon dioxide and the amount of water that's been produced. So now we see that we've produced 3.45 grams of carbon dioxide and 2.12 grams of water. So again, we're gonna start off by calculating the moles of each of these things. And then we're gonna to convert to the moles of the atoms of hydrogen and of carbon. So we'll once again do carbon up top, and we start off with 3.45 grams of CO2. And once again, we go from grams of CO2 to moles of CO2 with the molar mass. And one mole is up top. And then once we have moles of CO2, we go to moles of carbon. And there, once again, we have one carbon atom for every one CO2 molecule. So it's just a one-to-one -one ratio. And if we go through that math for our carbon, we get out 0 0.0784 moles of carbon. So that's moles of carbon. And we'll do that same thing now for hydrogen. And we're starting out with water here and we have 2.12 grams of water. And to go from, mole, from uh, mass of water to moles of water, we divide by the molar mass. So we have one mole up top. And our mass, our molar mass for water is 18.02 grams. And now we go ahead and go from moles of water to the number of hydrogen atoms, the moles of hydrogen atoms. And here again, we have two hydrogen atoms in each of our waters. So we write 2H up top per every one water molecule on the bottom. And when we do that math, we're gonna get out 0 0.235 moles of hydrogen. So all we've done in those two separate steps is we've started out with the mass of water and a mass of carbon dioxide. And we've taken that to the moles of each of those molecules. And then we've taken it to the moles of carbon in the case of CO2 and hydrogen in the case of water. And we basically have the ratio now, and remember the last step to get that ratio is divide each of those moles by the smallest number, which once again is carbon. And so I'm gonna divide that by 0 0.0784.
and I'm going to divide my moles of hydrogen by the same thing. And when we do that, we're going to get one for our carbon out. And we're going to get 3.001 for our hydrogen. And now here, we look and we say, okay, are those close to whole numbers? And in fact, they're both very close to whole numbers. So all we're going to do is we're just going to round in the case where they're not exactly whole numbers. So we're going to round that 3.001 to 3. And we assume that any reason that's not quite exactly 3 is from experimental error. Um, and no other reason. So that means that we have one carbon for every three hydrogens. And so that is, in fact, our empirical formula for that hydrocarbon. Okay, so this is how we can use combustion analysis to figure out the empirical formula of a hydrocarbon. Whenever you burn a molecule made of just carbon and hydrogen, you get out just carbon dioxide and water. All the carbon in that carbon dioxide and all the hydrogen in that water came from your hydrocarbon. So if you can calculate the moles of carbon you have and the moles of hydrogen you have, then you can get out the ratio of carbon to hydrogen in your hydrocarbon. Thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry. Please leave any questions you have below, visit my channel to see other chemistry videos, or subscribe to receive updates about future videos.